Today we'll be discussing the tenor voice. As you know, I'm writing an opera. Yeah, I'm still going to write this opera. Also, I thought I'd revise these voice types and make a comprehensive lecture series about the different voice types. I actually find them very interesting. Another reason why I wanted to go over this is because I'm the opera that I'm writing it is going to include trans voices as well as traditional voice types. And the thing is, it, it, it's including trans voices, but voice types in opera are traditionally gendered, which has been a bit confusing for me at times. And so this video is going to be a comprehensive overview of the voice types and their history so that we, mainly me I guess, can understand the gendered side of these categories and how those categories today are falling away. I'm also interested in how voice types tend to define character types in traditional opera, things like stock characters, you know. It is absurd to categorise everybody's voice into these different categories because people are human, people defy categories and rules all the time, but they're a useful overview to understanding the voice and general capabilities, a very useful starting point, and we just have to remember that when we're working with different voice types that people are human and there will be exceptions to every rule and category. So let's have a look at the character types of the tenor and their subcategories. Tenors tend to play the romantic interest or the hero of the opera, though not always. As with sopranos, there are a few different types of tenor voices that tend to suit specific roles. And wow, are there a few different types of tenor voices. This is another voice type that just keeps on going and going and going. Some of the tenor voice types include <laughs> the lyric tenor, Canore di Grazia, Lirico Spinto tenor, Spinto tenor and the Helden tenor, which usually sings heroic roles like those in Richard Wagner's operas. The tenor is the highest common adult male singing voice, so I'm not counting the counter tenor in this or the castrato, just the highest common one. Well, here are some famous tenor roles that you will know probably Nessun Dorma from Puccini's Turandot. Turando. This is famously performed by Luciano Pavarotti. Rodolfo from Puccini's La Boheme. Siegfried from Wagner's Ring Cycle. Pinkerton from Puccini's Madame Butterfly. Amore o grillo, dir non saprei, certo costei, ma con l'ingenue art investato. Famous tennis singers include Luciana Pavarotti, Placido Domingo, Jose Carreras. According to sfopera.com, these three famous tenors were instrumental in bringing opera to a wider audience and transforming the way many people think about opera. Just these three. I suppose they made him popular. Other famous tenors who are still active today include Jonas Kaufmann, Juan Diego Flores, Andrea Bocelli and Alfie Bo. Now let's have a look at the Leggero tenor. Leggero? Leggero. Someone said something interesting to me the other day. They were like, why are you ashamed to mispronounce words? Because it just means you learnt them whilst reading. You just didn't hear somebody say it. According to David L. Jones of voiceteacher.com, the leggero tenor is often considered the male counterpart of the coloratura soprano. That's interesting and very useful to know about. So if you want to know more about the coloratura soprano, check out my video on the soprano. David L. Jones also writes that this type of tenor voice is often taught or encouraged to employ too much chest voice connection in the middle and chest registers, causing major vocal problems in the upper register. The mistake of over-employment of the thicker vocal cord mass is often made due to the rounder colour in the middle and low register, characteristic of this vocal fac. Interesting. Now we're on to the tenore contraltino. The tenore contraltino is a specialised form of tenor voice found in Italian opera around the beginning of the 19th century, mainly in Rossini repertoire, which rapidly evolved into the modern romantic tenor. It is sometimes referred to as tenor altino or contraltino mm, in English books. This is a type of tenor voice with a compass not much wider than that of the baritone. We'll look at this baritone voice in a moment. But also this voice type is able to sustain a far higher 
Tessiture. 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 The basic range remains substantially the classic one from C3 to C5. The Tenori Contraltino is characterised by its dark and heavy lower octave but with sufficient vocal dexterity of the coloratura singing. For Tenori Contraltini, the threshold of the passage to the falsetto register rose two or three semitones, and so they could easily reach C5, but often up to E5, or even exceptionally to F5. Wow, actually that just hit me. F5? But for a tenor? Tenori Contraltinos were characterised by high, brilliant and acrobatic singing and could bravely confront Barry Tenors in the hot-blooded challenge duets, as well as finely sing lovers' melodies. They were, above all, able to sustain much higher tessiture than those of Barry Tenors themselves. Now we're on to the Tenori di Grazia, or Leggero Tenor. Leggero Tenor? Leggero. Tenor. Tenor. I can't say tenor anymore. Okay. So the tenore di grazia um, in Italian literally means tenor. Tenor of or with grace. It's an Italian operatic term for a type of tenor that lies between the tenore leggero. In German this is spiel tenor or tenor buffo. And the heavier tenore lyrico, the lyric tenor. (laughs) <laughs> it is characterised above all by elegant phrasing, agility of voice leading and mostly warm or sweet or very bright vocal coloration. coloration. The genre originated in the great period of the Romantic bel canto style between 1810 and 1850 approximately, in which this tenor type was often assigned the roles of youthful lovers or heroes. And I got this from Wikipedia, I'm sorry, I know. The Tenore di Grazia, or Leggero Tenor, Leggero? Leggero. Is one of the most confusing voices to classify, and it is often mistaken for a lyric baritone or a lyric tenor, as it can go as low as A2. However, the most distinguishing characteristic of the Tenore di Grazia that all the tenors don't have is the vocal ability in the higher extension that starts around A flat 5 to sing in the modal voice that sounds like falsetto. Okay, so the tenore di grazia can sing in the modal voice in the higher extension and that's the difference between them and other tenors. So what's the difference between this and like a counter tenor then? The typical vocal range of tenore di grazia lies at approximately A2 to C5. Also, I suppose they can get quite low as well and they would incorporate that into their range, which makes them different from countertenors. The tenor roles written in the early 19th century Italian operas are invariably leggero tenor roles. Leggero. Leggero tenor roles. These roles are usually written in 19th century Italian operas, especially those by Rossini, such as Lindoro in L'Italiana in Algeri. We also have Don Ramiro in La (laughs) Cenerentola. 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 And those by Bellini, such as Gualtiero in Il Pirata. We have Elvino in La Sonambula. And many Donzietti roles, such as Nemorino in L'Elisir d'Amor. And Ernesto in Don Pasquale. We have Tonio in La Fille du Regimon. These are all Tenore di Grazia roles. One of the most famous leggero tenors of that period was Giovanni Battista Rubini, for whom Bellini wrote nearly all of his operas. On to the lyric tenor now. 
Well, let's do this. The lyric tenor is a tenor voice with a vocal range that stretches approximately from C3 to D5. And it is characterised by a strong, but not heavy, bright, full timbre that can be easily heard above orchestral accompaniment. It's warm, bright and capable of hitting the highest tenor notes with ease. Lyric tenors get some of the most charming operatic roles. A fairly broad category, these singers can range in tone or colour. We have some examples here. The title role of Le Conte d'Offman by Offenbach is one example of a lyric tenor role. Courage, confiance, je ne m'y science. Now, spinto tenor. The spinto tenor voice has similar vocal characteristics of the lyric tenor, but with a heavier vocal weight that is sometimes called the dramatic lyric tenor. It also has a span of two octaves, reaching approximately from C3, an octave below middle C, to C5, extending D5. Spinto, from the Italian, means pushed, and it's a vocal term used to characterise soprano or tenor voices of a weight between lyric and dramatic. And for more information about spinto, you can check out my video on the soprano voice. The spinto is capable of handling large musical climaxes in opera at moderate intervals. Yeah, because if you push too much, you can damage your voice. Sometimes the terms lyrico spinto or jugendlich dramatisch are used to denote this category of voice. Jugendlich dramatisch. Is it hugendlich? Watch it be French now, isn't it? Similar to the lyric tenor in range, a spinto tenor has more lift, particularly towards the higher notes. Spinto roles are far tougher to sing than they appear. The heroic Verdi roles are full of traps for tenors, including that of Radames in Ada. <laughs> His romanza Celeste Ada is a formidable challenge which is deftly handled here by Ivan De Fabiani. Here is an excerpt from the Royal Swedish Opera's production staged by Michael Kavanagh and I got this again from sfopera.com. <laughs> Now on to the dramatic tenor. <laughs> the dramatic tenor is characterised by a rich, powerful and heavy vocal weight that is a common trait of dramatic singers in the tenor range of C3 to C5. Big, emotive and powerful dramatic tenors are usually spared the blushes of trying to hit a string of high notes but must project a rich sound against powerful orchestral forces. They are one of the rarer tenor voice types. Leon Cavallo's opera Pagliacci features a dramatic tenor role in the form of Canio, the leader of a troupe of comic actors. And in his aria Besti la Giuba, he prepares to wear his clan costume having just discovered that his wife has been unfaithful. I kind of want to see that one. And here is an excerpt from La Monet. Besti la Giuba e la faccia the light French lyric tenor is also often confused with the leggero, leggero tenor. Leggero. Examples of the French tradition of a light and lyrical voice can be found in roles such as Georges Brown in La Dame Blanche, <laughs> Chapelou in Les Post Postillons de l'Enjumeau. Nadir in Le Pêcheur de Perles. And Vincent in Mirele. And Gerald in Lachme. Helden tenor now. The Helden tenor is almost similar to the dramatic tenor in many aspects but possesses a strong passaggio at higher notes. 
and the voice can support higher dramatic phrases. So passaggio, that's the break, isn't it? Does that mean it has to break higher? It's stronger? Or is that a good thing? Bob? The Helton tenor can also execute the tenor's higher tessitura despite having a deep and thick vocal timbre and is often regarded as a baritone with higher extensions. Makes sense. And this kind of powerful tenor voice is normally used for the male heroic roles in the classical music performance or opera. Not church? Oh, of course not, they were all castrati. It translates as heroic tenor. And this vocal type was created with Wagner's collection of tenor roles that require weight and a dark quality. How was this vocal type created? Are people not working with like physical capabilities? How are they creating this? What does that word mean there? Held in tenor rolls are massive, requiring the singer to sustain a powerful sound over enormously long periods, which make the rolls nearly unsingable. So Wagner created a good dozen of these roles, but perhaps the most demanding are Siegfried in the ring cycle. <laughs> and the title role of Parsifal. We're onto the baritone now, and here is where I have questions. <laughs> the baritone is identifiable by its dark and heavy lower range, but packs sufficient dexterity for coloratura expressions, and has a vocal repertoire that spans from low C4 to high F Four. That could not be right. That's only like six notes, not including quarter tones. Literally that's all composers have ever written for this voice? What? I don't know if this is correct or not, just take it up with becomesingers.com or ask your local Barry Tenor. Such a small range. <laughs> anyway, whew, thank you for making it this far in the video. We've looked at the tenor, including the subcategories of tenor. These include the tenore contraltino, the tenore di grazia or leggero tenor, leggero. the lyric tenor, the spinto tenor, the dramatic tenor, the helden tenor and the baritenor. Stay tuned for the next video in the series where we'll be exploring the baritone. I'll see you there. Is one of the most confusing voices to class... <laughs> one of the uh -huh. okay the tenore di grazia the lyric tenor is a tenor with a vocal range that stretches a pox why can i not just